Lovers, welcome to yet another fabulous episode of season four. So today I'm talking to several drag queens in the western Massachusetts area about how drag taught them how to love. So that's today's theme and topic and I wanted to talk about that is because most folks out there think that drag is one of those things more so for you to do because you want to be a woman or you know you're just a boy in a dress, whatever their stipulation or their stereotype may be, they anyways misread you know, a lot of what drag does for us. I do have some fierce on-site interviews from Drag Royale, which is every first and I believe it's every second and the last Wednesday of the month at Oz Springfield downtown at the Mardi Gras Complex. It's a competition where you can come out and win dollars, honey, so if you think you have what it takes to win Drag Royale, hit up the Drag Royale page on Facebook and then check out these interviews that I have um, recorded previously at that particular competition from Alice Minhart Lockhart, Lexi DeVille, Irana Riggs, and Boxeline, and I'll be right back. Hi world, it's me Lorraine. Please introduce yourself and how long you've been doing drag. Well, my name is Lexi DeVille, and I've been doing drag for eight years. Maybe nine. I was just out of high school, I don't remember. <laughs> eight or nine, girl, no. <laughs> I graduated in 2006. 2006, okay, whatever that is. I'm Wait, bad at math. so 10 years. 10 years. We're yes, going on 10 years 16, in January. Yeah, January, so how has it changed your life or has it improved the way you love your life? I've gained a lot of weight. But it has improved my life. Um, I was very self-conscious growing up and I didn't know what to do with my life. And when I went to the, my first club, I saw drag queens and I said, I have got to do it. Um, I was so nervous, I looked a mess. But let me tell you, I did it every single Wednesday for two years. Um, I didn't stop. Um, someone that told me not to stop was Otis Sears, DJ Otis, um, love him. He told me not to stop, and I always stuck to that, and then 10 years later, I'm still doing it. I took a mild little two-year break, but I will say that um, my love for drag is renewed. Um, it really gives you strength, because now as a, as a man, because I take pride in that, you're a drag queen as a man, I still carry myself as I'm, as I'm always wearing a wig, because that's what gives me the confidence that I need. So if you haven't done drag, do you think your life would be differently? Has it affected it that much? Yeah, um, so to get real, if I hadn't done drag, I probably wouldn't have done drugs. Um, I wasn't around drugs my whole life. I wasn't a party kid, I was a theater kid. Um, I wasn't a, a big socialite. Um, and being in the drag scene, unfortunately, you're in the club scene and in the, in the club, you know, you have to realize that partying is a part of it. Um, and unfortunately, my personality is very addictive. Um, it runs in my family, so I got into trouble with that. And that's why I took two years off though. Um, so I will say I'm happy almost that I chose to do drag because unfortunately I had to go through some dark times, but I have grown so much from it and I'm a lot calmer and I have my whole life ahead of me now. I have a husband, a house, and a car. No, and listen, and speaking about that, because of the addiction of your personality of drag and the whole drug thing, coming to overcome it is the triumph story and let them know where you are today in your life with that. Um, it's a struggle all the time. Um, people think it's easy. Um, it's always going to be around you. I took two years off of drag, and when I made the choice, I was with my partner to start doing drag again. Um, he knew the whole time, and I said, you know, this isn't going to be easy. I'm going to be around it. Um, and I can say that I have never relapsed, never done anything, um, and I'm proud of myself. It took a lot of effort, but let me just say, I was homeless. I was considered my mom's house. Um, that's when I decided to be sober. I was living out of homes for three months um, on couches and on floors. And now I have my own apartment, my own car in my name. I have two dogs, I have a husband who I'm marrying, and I'm starting my own my, my own business within a month. So the proof's in the pudding. 
Right, no, no, that's fabulous. Now, yeah. what would you suggest to somebody who doesn't have the support of love and wants to do drag? Well, I love you. Um, I don't care if I know you or I don't know you. Someone out there loves you. I love you. I don't need to know you. And if you're going through something, you can email me, Lexi DeVille, Facebook slash Lexi DeVille, the rainbow. You can email any of us. We will be there for you. I had nobody. And then someone that I did not know emailed me on Facebook and saw that I was going through something. And boom, that person is still in my life today. But if you do not have someone, there are places to go, honey. Tapestry Health will help you. The AIDS Foundation will help you in Springfield. Prince of Valley, Western Mass. Yep. Valley. There's plenty of options for you, but if you need help, I am just a message away. And don't think that you can't text me, email me, anything. I will be there in a heartbeat. Now, Lexi Deville, I just want to say to my sister Lexi that I am super proud that you took a break from drag to get yourself together, darling. Because I understand and trust, believe. I know the demons that are out there in the nightlife and what entails of drag. I've been doing it, feels like for a hundred years, so I totally understand that you needed to get yourself clean and your breaking point was when you were sleeping from couch to couch. I am incredibly proud that you have your own car, you are engaged, your fiance is a gem. I just want to say, girl, I commend you and tip my wig to you that you have not relapsed by being back in this drag scene honey because you are strong you are brave and you are bold honey and again i love the fact that drag has taught you to come out of your shell like you were a theater kid you weren't a socialite you weren't a social bug but you had an addictive personality and that addictive personality kind of allowed you to you know, explore the wigs, the makeups. And you said something also that was very interesting to me, that caught me, is when you said that drag has helped you carry yourself as a man, as you should with class, elegance, and all that other good stuff. That is a good way of looking at it. And girl, I need to sit down with you and I want to talk to you more about um, this, you know, recovering from your drug habit. I think it's very important for the world to know that people do change. There are people out there that want to do better and you are a success story in the community and we thank you for all your strength and everything that you do for our community. Alice Lockhart. Hello, my name is Alice Lockhart Midnight and I've been doing drag for about two years. How has drag improved the way you see life? Well, for me, um, I definitely see life. I appreciate women more. Um, me being a bisexual drag queen, it's nice to um, be on both sides of the fence, both like sexually and internally. And um, it's something that I really enjoy doing. So would you say that your love for drag has changed your outlook in life, your outlook in life? Yes, it, it definitely has changed my outlook on life. Um, I definitely get out of the house more. I'm a person that used to play video games all the time. and. I find um, me actually spending more time getting out, meeting new people, um, you know, um, working on my craft and bettering myself. And what type of drag style would you consider yourself? Um, my drag style is I. My title would be fantasy, uh, fantasy metal queen. So basically, I give you fantasy looks like elven, fairy, pixies, dragons, and I give you like uh, rock star, punk, um, realness. So do you think if you never did drag, your love for life would be differently? Most definitely. My love for life would be a lot less. I'd be a lot more of a loner person. And um, yeah, I wouldn't be getting out as much. I wouldn't have all these friends. I wouldn't have the opportunity to meet so many people or you know, um, entertain the likes of everyone that I had the pleasure of performing for. So what I found interesting by um, Alice's statement about how being a bisexual drag queen has taught her how to be more in touch with women outside and inside. I'm wondering if she meant sexually Sometimes it takes for us to step into somebody's shoes in order for us to realize how they operate or how complicated they could be as a species, a female or a male. So maybe that's what she meant. What's also interesting about Alice is that her drag style. 
she's fantasy but yet still punk rock so she mixes the fantasy worlds unicorns mermaids all that good stuff this is, she kind of incorporates that with rock so that's very interesting and I'm glad that it has helped her step outside of her shell and she's no longer sitting in front of games doing this and she's out there intermingled with people and doing drag Right. Please state your name and how long you've been doing drag. I am Box of the Vine. I've been doing drag for just over two years now. And I live out in Berkshire, Mass, which is basically the middle of nowhere. And for drag, has this changed your life dramatically and has it improved the way you love yourself? Um, I mean, I always have been a performer. In high school, I went to college for theater. I performed off-Broadway. I did the whole theme park circuit for years and came back up here and started doing it and it was very much me learning things I was good at. I taught myself to sew when I started doing drag. I'm two years in and I can do just about anything with a sewing machine. Um, I've completely learned cosmetics, everything like that and I have a really, a lot stronger sense of self because I'm legitimately me with more makeup on. I don't have a drag character I put on, people just don't know me as a boy, so they just think it's a character. Um, what advice would you give someone who is inspiring to be a queen but doesn't have the love or the support? Um, number one, there's 101 ways to hide it. There's a lot of online outlets. Um, I work a lot with Tumblr's Drag Race, which is an online competition for budding drag queens. If you've been receiving paid bookings for over a year, you're automatically not allowed to audition. It's a lot of people that only do it in their bedroom, that some of them are hiding it from their parents. They just want to do it. They find acceptance from their parents in the middle of it, everything like that. And the internet scene is that, that budding scene. Um. For you personally, I, I, I just want to know, how has it improved the way you see life, generally? Whether it's seeing your partner, your family, or just another person through drag and expression. I mean, looking looking out into the world, you, you really do see that, you know, everything is drag. You're always putting on this persona and, and being someone else. And in drag, you know, you look over me in the bar, but here I am to your face yelling at you and telling you to give me money, and you do. It completely changes your perception of how people function in a bar and what they see, um, how to present yourself and how people present themselves to you. You can completely learn how to work a crowd in, in 15 minutes of being surrounded by people. All right, great. Um, now, what... Um, I'm trying to think of a good question that I want to like. What, what type of drag would you consider yourself or would you put yourself in a box? Um, I'm Box of Vine and I don't fit in the box, except for the ones with the poor spout. Um, I don't fit a box or a certain facet of drag. I really like old style drag. Um, I paint like I'm painting makeup on. I don't want to look like a real girl and I don't consider myself a female impersonator. Um, more, more, more clown, clown in a gown, that kind of stuff. I really strive to have really good costumes. Um, I like everything over the top. I like painting for the back row, all that stuff. It's just, it's not a female illusion to me. It's a character based in femininity, but it's not just being a woman, it's being a drag queen. There's a difference between being a woman and being a drag queen. Nice. Now, Miss Box of Vine, honey, I liked Box of Vine's, oh God, my hair got caught, girl. So, Ms. Box of Vine, what was interesting about her was when she said that drag has literally taught her how to, you know, she paints like she's in the back row. She doesn't think it's, she's a female person or anything. She, she paints drag, she interprets drag, do vintage type of scenarios, and that it's taught her that, you know, you can be out in a bar and you can be like, hey, hey, nobody notices you, but you throw on a wig and then you tell them to give you money. And she's right, they actually do they tip you. Um, I think Boxa is one of the most original queens that I've seen in a while. Um, her, her style, her makeup, her, her mixes, she incorporates a lot of, like I said, vintage with update um, kind of scenarios. And you know what? Good job, Boxa. State your name for the camera and how old are you? 
I'm Ivana and I'm 22. And how long have you been doing drag? I've been doing drag now for about two years. And what does drag do for you? Has it improved your life as a gay male? Are you gay or are you straight? I am gay. And I feel being in drag and do it and performing has given me like a confidence outside. Um, when I was younger in high school, I was very quiet, flew under the radar, and very reserved. And now, a f just a couple years later, I'm a very positive and outgoing person, and I just love what I do. Um. Speaking of drag, how long does it take for you to get into this character? Um, if I'm rushing out of work and I'm not covering my eyebrows and just using my natural eyebrows, it takes about an hour and a half. And if I'm doing something very, very much like this, I take about two and a half hours-ish. I like to take my time and like enjoy and relax through the process. So how would people describe your drag? My drag, I'd say a lot of people would say it's very um, versatile. Um, I can do very pretty, like glamorous looks, and I can do very, what I'm wearing now, horrible. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but, what advice would you give to somebody who is inspiring to be a drag queen but doesn't have the support at home? Advice I would give. If you don't have that support at home, I would definitely say first and foremost, find that support. To do drag, you need a support system and you need people who are gonna encourage you and believe in you. Believe me, there have been many times where I've just been like, fuck it, like, I, I can't do this, like, I'm, I'm not gonna make it. Would you change your decision of striving to be the best drag queen that you could be for you? Oh, no, no. Um, I love what I do for people. I love performing and making them smile. I love that for a night, I can take someone out of the reality of their life and into this, like, over-the-top, like crazy good time that even if in their like at home life their personal life there's a lot of like negativity going on i can just give them this one moment of like pure over the top positivity that like just makes people feel good what i found interesting about ivana was that ivana was again a shy student someone who was very timid in school and drag has helped her break out of the shell it has helped her to love herself to accept and embrace who she is her drag style pretty or like she said horrible of what she was wearing um, i think ivana has a lot of potential in drag i think love is going to teach her many many more things many more things through drag um, she's only been doing it about two years and she has a lot of passion drive and talent and she's going to go very very far in drag and i just want to say girl i am glad that you no longer are shy because you are pleasant to be around your personality is definitely bubbly and i definitely enjoy you so thank you for watching today boys and girls and love bugs and cyber world i hope you learned something about yourself today or how drag can help you love stay tuned for my next episode next monday it is September and it is Suicide Prevention Month. So I'm sitting down with a local drag queen, Mia Easy Lay, who has struggled with suicide and I've struggled with suicide myself. And we're gonna be talking about a certain RuPaul's Drag Race girl who commented about how she feels about suicide. So it's Suicide Prevention Month, so what better way to kick off the end of September, honey, with Season for Love with Mia Easy Lay. We'll be back next Monday, 3 p.m. You know where to find us, www.facebook.com forward slash The Rainbow Show, or watch us live and HD Shade, honey, on YouTube forward slash The Rainbow TV. Love you guys, and again, thanks for the support. Double kisses and good night.